let's take a look at how we now do the reflections on this image. The first thing we're going to need to do is copy the bottom portion of the image. So we're going to need something to copy from, because this is a layered image. So in order to get a non-layered version of this that we can copy and paste from, we need to do a stamp visible. And you remember, if you've seen previous shows, the way we do a stamp visible is a Control-Alt-Shift-E or Command-Option-Shift-E on the Mac. And we need a new layer to do that in, and we can get a new layer by doing Control-Alt-Shift-N or Command-Option-Shift-N on a Mac. So if we do Control alt shift n and then e because i'm on a pc command option shift n command option shift e on a mac we get a new layer and then into it we get the stamped visible so that's now a completely new layer copied with the contents of all the layers below so that looks identical to what we were seeing on the screen which is why we saw no visible change when we when we created it so that's going to be our source layer that we're going to copy and paste from we're not going to keep it around it's just there for us to work with just for a minute or two so we can uh, close the layers palette now for a moment and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where our horizon is going to be now I'm going to use a guide layer um, so if you if you haven't got your rulers visible you can press Control R or Command R on your computer to make those rulers appear and disappear and if you click on them and drag down I'm going to make a, a line for where our horizon is going to be and I want it to be just below the chin there so if I drag and drop that line there the next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy everything that's below the line and mirror it upwards. So we're going to get our marquee selection tool, we get the marquee tool by pressing M and we're going to draw a line all the way around that region and as you can see it snaps to that guide layer, that guideline that we created. So with that select region selected Control C to copy or edit copy in the uh, edit menu and uh, just watching the layers palette here we're going to do a Control V and that's going to paste everything that we just copied into a new layer. So we've got a brand new layer 5 there is our pasted layer. And with that layer selected, we're then going to transform it by doing Control T. And that's going to give us these little transformation handles, which we're going to just drag the bottom one all the way up until it comes up to the top and it inverts our image. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create the impression of a reflected perspective on the underside of some water. So I'm going to let the, the copied image be just a little bit less vertically tall and just a little bit wider to give a sort of a vague impression of perspective. Now we could really mess around a long time trying to get the perspective right and and actually you know the reflected perspective should look very similar but we're not we're going to do a little bit of work on this so it really doesn't matter getting this absolutely perfect. What we really need is to have the details that we want reflected in the bottom nicely visible in the top so the face you know the arm uh, the copy of the lady holding you know a bit of the legs those are the things that we want to be nicely visible where in the reflection so we've copied and pasted that the next step is going to be just to give that a little blur so under the filter menu we're going to go into blur and we're going to choose gaussian blur and that's going to give us this gaussian blur window which if i click and drag we can see what it's doing to the face now we don't want to go too blurred. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make this look like a reflection and it wouldn't be quite as sharp on the underside of the water, reflected on the underside of the water. So we just need to take some of the sharpness off. So I'm just looking at the face here on the original and um, we can see how much sharpness we've just taken off. I'm going to drag that to around about one and a half pixels and that just takes the edge off the sharpness in the reflected image, which is going to be great. So that's just what we're after there. The next step is to make another layer that's going to be um, an old, another reflected layer, but it's going to just sort of make that thing look sort of swimmy and watery. So um, I'm going to make another marquee selection on the bottom of this image. I'm going to choose that stamped layer that we used first, and I'm going to marquee that bottom part of the image again. And once again, we're going to copy and paste it, but I want it to come out of the top layer, so I'm going to do my edit copy first and then in the layers palette I'm going to choose the top layer in the stack and again I'm going to edit paste and that's going to give us another pasted new layer, layer 6 this time and we're going to once again control T to transform it and once again we're going to drag the bottom up and this time I want this not to be in the same place so I'm going to make it sort of taller 
The reason is I don't want it interfering too much with the reflected faces hit down here and, and the bits that I want visible. So this very bright bit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a lot of messing around to make it blurry. I'm not going to worry too much about the, the size of it because the next step is going to be to go to Filter, Liquify. And that's going to pop up a liquefying window, which is way bigger than my recording screen, so I apologise for that. A little bit hard to see. So... Um, We've got a, a liquify tool here which allows us to push and pull bits of the image around. So uh, on the right hand side here we've got a brush size, a brush density, a brush pressure. Um, I'm using a brush size around about a little bit smaller than the face, so you can see around about 48 in this case. And uh, brush density of 50 which is the default and I'm going to just have the pressure uh, sort of 70-ish, something like that. This is this is just one of those things that whatever image you're working on, you're going to need to mess around with these values until you get something that looks right. But once I've got those things, I'm going to use the push tool here, the forward warp tool, and I'm just going to push the paint around on this canvas. So if I just click and drag, you can see it's making sort of wavy marks in the in the canvas. And I'm just going to sort of vaguely just start off by doing a series of sort of zigzags back and forth. I'm going to be a little bit less consistent in a minute. But you can see that that's starting to look a little bit more watery. And I'm going to just sort of push maybe a little bit more randomly now. I'm going to also make the brush smaller. We can use the same brush size um, keyboard shortcuts in here as we can in Photoshop. So the uh, square bracket keys on a British or American keyboard will do a nice job of uh, making your brush size change. And that's just going to give us a little bit more randomness. I don't want it looking too uh, consistent because, you know, water doesn't ripple in a in an absolutely even and consistent way. I'm not worried about the legs because they're going to be off the top of the image. So I'm just pulling this around. We really are intentionally breaking the shape of this image quite a lot because it's going to be just sort of going over the top. I'm just going to sort of spread out the hair just a little bit just because I want that to sort of have a big sort of once it's blurred and in the background there, I want it just sort of spread out like like water float like hair floating in water. So there's a pretty good uh, messed up version of our uh, uh, of our layer. Once we're done with that, we can press OK, and it's going to take that image back into Photoshop. So now that we've got our warped and transformed layer here in Photoshop, the next thing to do is to give it just a little bit more blur. So we're going to go back into the filter menu, we're going to go blur, and this time we're going to use the motion blur tool. And the way the motion blur tool works is we can say, let's just drag that so that we're looking at the, the right bit here. And um, it's going to give us, as you can see this, this little bar, if I click and drag it round, we can say which direction we want the motion blur to be blurred in. So in this case, I want it blurring left and right. And we can see the same effect in the background here. And we can change how much it's blurred by dragging this left and right as well. So what I'm going to go for is something... I'm just doing this by eye at the moment. I would say something like... Something like that, around about the 50 pixel mark. Um, and as you can see, that is completely messed up this version of the image we've got up here, which is great. That's exactly what I'm wanting. I don't want there to be anything really to, for the eye to settle on in there. All it's got to do is give the impression of sort of rippling water. So now back in our layers palette, we're going to go to this layer and we're going to just drag the opacity right down, down to the re into the region of sort of 40%. And as I do that, you can see this face appears through the water. So let me just drag that back down again and watch the face. And you can see that just appears nicely. At around about the 40% mark, we've got plenty of the uh, the rippling water and we've got a good strong face appearing there in the, in the reflection as well. Now that that's done, the uh, layers that we've been using, as a, um, particularly the, the uh, layer that we stamped visible, we can throw that away. So I'm just going to click on that and drag it into the trash. And I'm going to click and then shift click those two layers that we've been working on. And I'm going to press Control G or Command G on the keyboard. And that's going to group them. So that's going to be, if I rename that, that's going to be reflection layers. Remember, you should always name your layers because when you come back later on and you want to figure out what on earth this layer was for, you're not going to have the faintest clue if you haven't named it. And, uh, you know, it is possible that you'll come back to these old images. Never flatten your images. Keep all your layers. You'll come back and tweak things later. Let's also get rid of that guideline that we've got on there, which you can get rid of by... You can drag it around by using the Move tool, which is on the V key on the keyboard. So if you click V and then 
point at the line and drag it off onto the ruler and we can get rid of the rulers with control R. Gives us just a little bit more real, so get real estate on the screen. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.